We have multiple little fires in the boat and all kinds of other issues. And they have to cut the cables with a fire axe. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert videos here at Boat How To. We're Nigel and Jan, and we answer your questions about boat electrical systems. So today we got one about lithium ion batteries. And the question is, we recently replaced our old gel cell batteries with four 200 amp hour lithium ion batteries. One of the reasons we bought these batteries is because we were told they are drop in replacement for our old batteries and we wouldn't need to change the wiring or anything else. Now we're being told that we will need to install larger battery cables. Is this true? Well, that's an uh, so, interesting topic. Fundamentally, no, it's not true, but that's not really the issue. <laughs> if they're just changing the batteries, presumably the conductors from the old batteries to the boat systems were sized based on the boat loads. Mm. So we're not changing those. We've got the same boat and the same loads. So fundamentally, there's no reason to change those and then the overcurrent protection will remain the same and so on. All we've got is a much more capable battery pack that we can run longer or we can charge quicker or whatever. So here we yeah. have a fantastic ultralight <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> lithium ion uh, smart integrated BMS uh, battery. The funny thing is it's so light because it's actually empty. So this is just a mock-up. But basically this would be a drop-in, so-called drop-in battery with an internal mm -hmm. BMS. And then here we have one from the same company that's actually one with an external BMS. So it actually says only run it with the Victron BMS. Yeah. Also pretty light for the same reason. <laughs> from my perspective, there's no such thing as a drop-in lithium-ion battery. Um, because they have, it's a wonderful technology. I have it on my own boat. Um, but it's got a number of failure modes that are different to the failure mode you have with lead acid batteries and they have to be taken into account. And uh, if you don't do that, uh, you're potentially going to have the battery disconnect from the boat at some inconvenient moment. But that's not the worst thing that can happen. If you screw this up, you know, you can actually set these batteries on fire. We've all seen the, the dramatic photos of that. The issue in terms of the wiring here is not the wiring to the loads because they haven't changed. So that remains fundamentally the same. It's the fact that we need to be able to control in particular the charging devices on the boat so we don't accidentally overcharge the battery and force it to a point where it disconnects. If it disconnects with the engine running, the alternator's working, we're going to blow the diodes in the alternator. The boat shuts down, it may be a critical moment. And if it doesn't disconnect in an overcharged situation, then we run the risk of driving it into thermal runaway and setting it on fire. Yeah, so, so basically the problem with these internal BMSs is that you, like basically it can happen that the BMS does whatever it wants to do without any control yes. from the outside, without yeah. any warning. Yeah. So it basically can shut uh, shut down whenever it thinks there's some problem, which yes. rarely happens, but of yeah. course it's it's an issue that... Well, and the uh, ABYC standard on lithium-ion batteries, it was released in uh, last year. And just uh, this morning, prior to this uh, discussion we're having, I was working with a draft ISO standard on lithium-ion batteries. Those, those standards actually require the, the batteries find some way to communicate before they disconnect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and precisely because of these issues we're yeah. talking about. So you can drop them in, but uh, fundamentally it's not a smart thing to do and I certainly wouldn't do it on my own boat. Yeah. And then basically if you have this this one with an, an external BMS yeah. that's connected, talking to the other batteries in the pack yeah. and talking to your charging devices ideally. And in particular talking to the a voltage regulator on the alternator and if it sees an over voltage condition developing telling the alternator to shut down and that way it doesn't have to disconnect and uh, we don't end up blowing up the alternator. I think I mean even though you don't need to change the wiring um, there's another thing that I think is important with lithium ion batteries and that's the AIC rating of the fuses. Um, yes thank you. That's also goes with uh, with drop-in batteries. Um, yeah, make sure to have a fuse with a proper very high AIC rating. If we took, a, took this battery here and dropped a wrench across the top of it, mm -hmm. uh, we'd just melt it. Mm. I mean, pretty much instantaneously. Yeah. Um, Vaporize the, uh, the stored energy in even a, even a substantial lead acid battery is such that you can get um, three, four, five thousand amps of short circuit current mm -hmm. in a dead short situation. With lithium ion, it can be 10, 15, 20,000 amps. Mm -hmm. So our overcurrent protection devices need to be able to handle that enormous instantaneous current flow and to open the circuit. If they get a current that they can't handle, they arc over. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. That's if the air gets ionized. Yeah. Even though the fuse is melted, you've got ionized air and it's conductive. And then the, the fuse is basically not doing its job. Mm -hmm. and, and I was, as you know, I was on a boat where this actually happened um, with a big lithium ion battery pack and it uh, arced over. It was a test that I had been flown out there to have a look at it. And as I said to the guy afterwards, I'd asked him if he'd do it again because it was quite fascinating because <laughs> we had multiple little fires in the boat and all kinds of other issues. Yeah. And they had to cut the cables with a fire axe. Um, so that's what happens when you don't have high enough AIC rating and it actually does arc over and then you're back to the fire X situation. So that's really important with lithium ion in particular to make sure that the first fuse when you come off the battery has that high AIC rating it's called and effectively the only fuses in the marine marketplace that are adequate for this are a class T fuse in the US and in Europe there's a class of fuses called an NH. Okay. Don't yeah. get used that have very high AIC yeah. ratings. So like you want probably at least like 20,000 20, amps. You want 20,000 amps. Yeah. And then uh, the MRBF fuses, the ones that vault to the, mm -hmm. to the battery which post, are which are really nice terrific. Ones, yeah. Their AIC rating is no more than 10,000 amps. It's not high enough for lithium ion. Yeah. So keep that in mind. So the wiring is actually not the issue, but yeah. there's like if you want to put in lithium ion in your, battery, uh, in your boat, well, there's for sure more than just putting it in and yes. replacing it. And, and if you, battery. like they put four of them in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure it's a 12 volt system and they've paralleled four 12 volt batteries. Each one of those batteries has a potential circuit current of 10,000 amps. Mm -hmm. So you put four of them in parallel, you're talking 40,000 amps. So even the class T fuse is getting marginal. So then you can't just bring them all together to a bus bar and then come off that to the boat through your class T fuse. Mm -hmm. You've got to put a class T fuse on each of the batteries. And then you're talking another uh, close to $100 for, for, for the fuses, mm -hmm. per fuse. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, including the holder, that's at yeah. least 100 yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's quite a bit to, to think about with lithium ion battery installations that goes way beyond what you'd be thinking about with a lead acid battery. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to um, scare you away because it's a really cool oh, technology. Yeah, and I'm technology. actually thinking of upgrading my boat as well at some point. Yeah. Just keep in mind that it's like, if, even if people sell it as a drop-in replacement, it's actually normally not the case. Or at least you need to really think, think things through. Yeah. It's not a battery. It's an energy storage system. Yeah. So you have to think about a system. Yeah. And that's the wiring, the fuses, the charging devices. It's uh, temperature management. Mm -hmm. It's a whole range of issues, that, and you have to get them all right. Yeah. So actually, if you want to learn more about these lithium-ion battery standards and how safe installations are possible, check out our uh, Advanced Marine Electrics course in Boat How To, because that's actually where we have a whole module on this system. <laughs> and I mean, we're not expert on this topic, but we for sure we know what to look out for. So check that out, yeah. and um, yeah. We hope to see you soon here on YouTube or at boathowto.com. Stay tuned. <laughs>